Chapter 1 Finding Your Inspiration As a writer, the most important aspect of the writing process is finding your inspiration. Inspiration can come from anywhere, and it's up to you to find what works best for you. Inspiration can come from personal experiences, current events, books, movies, music, and more. Whatever it is that drives you, it's important to find it and hold on to it. When you have a clear source of inspiration, you have a foundation to build your story upon. Finding inspiration is often easier said than done. Many writers struggle to find that spark that sets their creativity alight. However, there are several strategies that you can use to find your inspiration. One approach is to brainstorm and write down everything that interests you. This can include hobbies, personal experiences, people you admire, and anything else that piques your curiosity. Once you have your list, look for connections between the items and see if any stand out as particularly inspiring. You can also try free writing or journaling about your ideas, as this can often help to clarify your thoughts and reveal hidden connections. Another approach is to immerse yourself in different cultures and experiences. Traveling, attending cultural events and trying new things can all help to broaden your horizons and spark your imagination. The more you see and experience, the more you will have to draw from when it comes to finding inspiration for your writing. If you're still struggling to find your inspiration, consider seeking out the works of other writers. Read books, watch movies and listen to music that resonates with you. Pay attention to what makes these works so appealing and try to incorporate those elements into your own writing. Once you have found your source of inspiration, it's important to hold on to it. Keep a notebook or journal with you at all times, and jot down any thoughts or ideas that come to you. Having a tangible record of your inspiration can help you to stay focused and motivated as you work on your writing. In conclusion, finding your inspiration is a crucial step in the writing process. It's what gives you a foundation to build upon, and it's what sets your work apart from others. Don't be afraid to experiment and try new things in your search for inspiration. The more you explore, the more you will learn about yourself and your writing. So embrace the journey and find what works best for you. Chapter 2 Developing a Strong Plot A strong plot is the backbone of any good story. It gives your writing direction and helps to keep your readers engaged. However, developing a strong plot can be challenging, especially if you're new to writing. In this chapter, we will explore some of the key elements that go into creating a compelling plot. One of the first things to consider when developing a plot is the structure of your story. A traditional narrative structure consists of three main parts, the setup, the confrontation, and the resolution. The setup introduces the characters, the world, and the conflict. The confrontation is where the conflict is explored and resolved. The resolution is where the story comes to a close and the conflict is resolved. Another important aspect of plot is character development. Your characters should be well-rounded, with distinct personalities and motivations. They should also change and grow over the course of the story. This can be achieved by putting your characters in challenging situations that force them to confront their fears, beliefs, and values. Conflict is also a crucial aspect of plot. Conflict drives the story forward and keeps your readers engaged. It can take many forms from internal struggles to external battles. Regardless of the form it takes, conflict should be at the heart of your plot. Pacing is also an important aspect of plot. Pacing refers to the rhythm of the story and how events unfold over time. A well-paced story will have a balance of slow and fast-paced scenes, with the right amount of tension and release to keep the reader engaged. Finally, it's important to consider the themes of your story. Themes are the underlying messages or ideas that you want to convey through your writing. They can be as simple as love conquers all or as complex as the meaning of life. Themes can be woven into your plot, characters and setting to give your story depth and meaning. In conclusion, 
Developing a strong plot requires careful consideration of the structure of your story, character development, conflict pacing and themes. It's important to be patient and take your time as you work on your plot. Revisions are a natural part of the writing process, so don't be afraid to make changes as needed. Remember, a strong plot is the foundation of a good story, so take the time to get it right. Chapter 3 Crafting Compelling Characters Characters are the heart of your story, and they are what make your readers care about what happens. In order to create compelling characters, it's important to understand who they are and what motivates them. This chapter will explore the key elements of character development and provide tips for crafting memorable and relatable characters. The first step in character development is to define your character's personality. What are their strengths and weaknesses? What do they believe in and what are their values? What are their hopes and fears? These questions will help you to define your character's personality and make them feel like real people. Next, it's important to consider your character's backstory. What events in their past have shaped who they are today? What experiences have they had that have made them the person they are? Knowing your character's backstory can help to make them feel more real and give them depth. Physical description is another important aspect of character development. How does your character look? What are their distinctive features? What do they wear? These details can help to bring your character to life and make them feel more real to your readers. Motivation is another key aspect of character development. Why does your character do what they do? What drives them? Understanding your character's motivations can help to make their actions feel more natural and believable. It's also important to consider your character's relationships. Who do they interact with in the story? How do they feel about these people? What kind of dynamics exist between them? These relationships can add depth to your characters and make them feel more real. Finally, it's important to give your characters unique quirks and habits. This can include anything from a particular mannerism to a favorite food. These small details can make your characters feel more relatable and memorable. In conclusion, Crafting compelling characters requires careful consideration of their personality, backstory, physical description, motivation, relationships and quirks. Remember, characters are the heart of your story, and they are what make your readers care about what happens. So, take the time to get to know your characters and make them feel real. Chapter 4 Building a Unique World the world in which your story takes place is just as important as the characters and plot. A well-crafted world can help to immerse your readers and make your story feel more real. This chapter will explore the key elements of world-building and provide tips for creating a unique and believable world. The first step in building a unique world is to consider the geography and climate of the place where your story takes place. What kind of terrain does your world have? What is the climate like? How does this affect the lives of the people who live there? These details can help to give your world a sense of place and make it feel more real. Next, consider the history and culture of your world. What events have shaped the world and its people? What are the values and beliefs of the society? What is the state of the world and its political systems? These details can help to give your world depth and make it feel like a real place. Technology is another important aspect of world building. What kind of technology exists in your world? How does it impact the lives of the people who live there? Consider both the benefits and drawbacks of technology in your world and how it affects the characters and plot. It's also important to consider the magic system of your world, if applicable. How does magic work in your world? Who has access to it and who doesn't? What are the rules and limitations of magic in your world? A well-crafted magic system can add depth and complexity to your world and make it feel more real. World building is a process and it's important to be consistent in your details. 
Make sure that the details of your world are consistent throughout your story and that the rules of your world are clearly defined. This can help to avoid confusion and make your world feel more believable. In conclusion, building a unique world requires careful consideration of geography and climate, history and culture, technology and magic system. Remember, the world in which your story takes place is just as important as the characters and plot. So take the time to craft a world that is unique, believable and immersive for your readers. Chapter 5. Setting the Tone with Dialogue Dialogue is a powerful tool in storytelling, and it can help to set the tone and pace of your story. It can also reveal character and advance the plot. This chapter will explore the key elements of effective dialogue and provide tips for writing dialogue that is engaging, believable and memorable. The first step in writing effective dialogue is to make sure it sounds natural. People don't always speak in complete sentences and it's important to capture the rhythm and flow of natural speech. Use contractions, interruptions and other elements of speech to make your dialogue sound more natural. Next, consider the purpose of the dialogue. What are your characters trying to communicate and why? Make sure that the dialogue advances the plot and reveals character. Avoid excessive expository dialogue, which is when characters tell the reader information instead of showing it. It's also important to give each character a unique voice. What are their speaking patterns and habits? How do they express themselves? Differentiating your characters through their dialogue can help to make them more memorable and distinguishable from one another. Conflict is an important element of effective dialogue and it can help to keep the conversation interesting and engaging. Conflict can be as simple as a disagreement between two characters or as complex as a heated argument. Just make sure that the conflict feels natural and that it advances the plot. In addition to the spoken words, it's also important to consider the subtext of the dialogue. What is the underlying meaning of what is being said? This subtext can reveal character, advance the plot and add depth to your story. Finally, it's important to edit and revise your dialogue to make sure it's engaging and believable. Read your dialogue out loud and see if it sounds natural. Ask yourself if it advances the plot and reveals character. Make changes as necessary to ensure that your dialogue is effective. In conclusion, writing effective dialogue requires careful consideration of the rhythm and flow of natural speech, the purpose of the dialogue, unique character voices, conflict subtext, and editing and revision. Dialogue is a powerful tool in storytelling, and it can help to set the tone and pace of your story. So, take the time to craft dialogue that is engaging, believable, and memorable. Chapter 6 Mastering Point of View Point of View, POV, is an important aspect of storytelling, and it can greatly impact the tone and perspective of your story. The POV you choose can determine how the reader experiences the story and can affect the way they relate to the characters and events. This chapter will explore the different points of view and provide tips for choosing and executing the best POV for your story. The first decision you need to make when it comes to POV is which type of POV you want to use. The three main POVs are first person, second person and third person. In first person POV, the narrator is a character in the story and uses I to tell the story. In second person POV, the narrator addresses the reader directly as you. Third-person POV is the most common and involves a narrator who is not a character in the story and uses third-person pronouns such as he or she. Once you've chosen your POV, it's important to remain consistent throughout your story. Maintaining a consistent POV helps to maintain the tone and perspective of the story, and it also helps to avoid confusion for the reader. Another important aspect of POV is character depth. In first-person and third-person limited POV, the reader experiences the story through the eyes of a single character. This can allow for a deeper exploration of that character's thoughts, 
feelings and motivations. Third-person omniscient POV, on the other hand, allows the narrator to share the thoughts and feelings of multiple characters. It's also important to consider the tone and mood of your story when choosing your POV. Different POVs can create different tones and moods. For example, first-person POV can create an intimate and personal tone, while third-person POV can create a more distant and objective tone. Finally, it's important to experiment with different POVs to find the one that works best for your story. Sometimes, the POV that seems the most natural at first may not be the best choice for your story. Be open to trying different POVs and see what works best. In conclusion, choosing the right POV is an important aspect of storytelling, and it can greatly impact the tone and perspective of your story. Consider the type of POV, consistency, character depth, tone and mood, and experimentation when choosing your POV. Remember, the POV you choose can determine how the reader experiences the story, and can affect the way they relate to the characters and events. So take the time to master point of view and choose the best POV for your story. Chapter 7. Using Symbolism and Metaphor Symbolism and metaphor are powerful literary devices that can add depth and meaning to your writing. They allow you to convey complex ideas and emotions through the use of symbols and comparisons. This chapter will explore the use of symbolism and metaphor and provide tips for incorporating these techniques into your writing. Symbolism is the use of symbols to represent ideas or qualities. A symbol can be an object, character, or action that represents something beyond itself. For example, a white dove may symbolize peace, a red rose may symbolize love, and a dark forest may symbolize danger. The power of symbolism lies in the fact that it can add layers of meaning to your writing, allowing you to convey ideas and emotions beyond the literal text. Metaphor, on the other hand, is a figure of speech in which a word or phrase is applied to an object or action to which it is not literally applicable. A metaphor compares two unlike things to suggest a likeness. For example, her voice was music to his ears, is a metaphor that compares her voice to music. Metaphors allow you to express complex ideas and emotions through comparisons, and they can add depth and richness to your writing. When using symbolism and metaphor, it's important to choose symbols and comparisons that are relevant and meaningful to your story. The symbol or metaphor should add depth and meaning to your story, rather than simply being an ornament. It's also important to be consistent with the symbolism and metaphors you use throughout your story. Consistency helps to maintain the tone and meaning of your writing, and it also helps to avoid confusion for the reader. In addition, it's important to use symbolism and metaphor sparingly. Too much symbolism and metaphor can overwhelm the reader and detract from the overall impact of your writing. The best way to use these techniques is to choose a few key symbols and metaphors and use them effectively and consistently throughout your story. It's also important to consider the tone and mood of your story when using symbolism and metaphor. Different symbols and metaphors can create different tones and moods. For example, dark and ominous symbols may create a tense and foreboding mood, while light and airy symbols may create a peaceful and serene mood. Finally, it's important to experiment with symbolism and metaphor to find what works best for your story. Sometimes, the symbols and metaphors that seem the most natural at first may not be the best choice for your story. Be open to trying different symbols and metaphors and see what works best. In conclusion, symbolism and metaphor are powerful literary devices that can add depth and meaning to your writing. Consider the relevance and meaning of your symbols and comparisons, consistency, sparing use, tone and mood, and experimentation when using these techniques. Remember, the use of symbolism and metaphor can allow you to convey complex ideas and emotions through symbols and comparisons, adding depth and richness to your writing. So, take the time to master the use of symbolism and metaphor and incorporate these techniques into your writing.
Chapter 8 Crafting Effective Descriptions Description is an essential component of writing. Whether you are describing a setting, a character, or an object, your descriptions should be clear, vivid, and memorable. This chapter will explore the importance of effective description and provide tips for crafting descriptions that bring your writing to life. The first step in crafting effective descriptions is to focus on the senses. People experience the world through their five senses, sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell. When you write a description, try to incorporate all five senses to create a vivid and memorable image in the reader's mind. For example, if you are describing a forest, you might write, the sun was shining through the branches of the tall trees, casting dappled shadows on the ground. The air was thick with the scent of pine and the sound of rustling leaves. The forest floor was soft and spongy beneath my feet, and I could taste the crispness of the fresh air in my mouth. Another important aspect of effective description is the use of vivid and sensory language. Avoid using generic bland language. Instead, use precise and imaginative words to bring your descriptions to life. For example, instead of saying the room was big, you might write the room was cavernous. Instead of saying the sun was shining, you might write the sun was beaming. It's also important to vary your sentence structure and word choice. A string of short, simple sentences can be monotonous, while a string of long, complex sentences can be confusing. Mixing up sentence length and structure can add rhythm and interest to your writing. Additionally, using a variety of words to describe similar things can add variety and interest to your writing. When describing characters, consider their physical appearance, personality, and behavior. Use descriptive language to create a vivid image of your characters and make them come alive. For example, you might write, his eyes were a piercing blue and his hair was as wild as a storm. He had a reckless grin that hinted at a mischievous streak, and he moved with the confident grace of a panther. When describing a setting, consider the time of day, the weather, and the atmosphere. Use descriptive language to create a sense of place and to convey the mood and tone of your story. For example, you might write, The small town was bathed in the golden light of a summer sunset. The streets were quiet, and the only sound was the occasional chirp of a cricket. The air was warm and heavy with the scent of honeysuckle. Finally, consider the purpose of your description. Is it to provide background information, to set the scene, or to reveal something about a character. Make sure your descriptions serve a purpose and enhance your writing. In conclusion, effective description is an essential component of writing. Use your senses, vivid and sensory language, varied sentence structure and word choice and purposeful descriptions to bring your writing to life. So take the time to craft descriptions that are clear, vivid and memorable and enhance the impact of your writing. Chapter 9 Tightening Your Prose As a writer, one of your goals should be to create writing that is clear, concise, and effective. Tightening your prose means removing excess words and phrases, simplifying sentences, and ensuring that every word serves a purpose. In this chapter, we'll explore the steps you can take to tighten your writing and make your prose more impactful. The first step in tightening your prose is to simplify your sentences. Write in simple, straightforward language that is easy to understand. Avoid using complex sentence structures and convoluted language. Instead, focus on writing sentences that are clear and direct. This will help you communicate your ideas effectively and engage your reader. The next step is to remove unnecessary words and phrases. When you're writing, it can be tempting to use filler words and phrases that don't add anything to your writing. These words and phrases can detract from the impact of your writing, so it's important to eliminate them. For example, instead of saying there is, you might say is. Instead of saying in order to, you might say to. Eliminating unnecessary words and phrases will not only tighten your prose, but it will also make your writing more concise and powerful. Another important aspect of tightening your prose is to be mindful of repetition. Repeat words and phrases can quickly become monotonous and detract from your writing. 
Instead, use a thesaurus or a similar tool to find synonyms for frequently used words. This will help you add variety to your writing and avoid repetition. Pacing is also important in writing. A slow pace can cause boredom while a fast pace can be confusing. To ensure that your pacing is effective, be mindful of sentence length. Vary your sentence length to create interest and keep your reader engaged. You might also consider using sentence fragments and short, punchy sentences to add variety to your writing and create a sense of immediacy. Finally, consider the tone and mood of your writing. Tone refers to the writer's attitude toward their subject, while mood refers to the atmosphere of the piece. Both tone and mood should be consistent throughout your writing. If you want to create a serious mood, avoid humor and levity. If you want to create a light-hearted mood, use humor and levity to your advantage. In conclusion, tightening your prose means simplifying your sentences, removing unnecessary words and phrases, avoiding repetition, paying attention to pacing and being mindful of tone and mood. By following these steps, you can create writing that is clear, concise and impactful. Your prose will be tight and your writing will be more engaging and effective. Chapter 10 Editing for Clarity and Flow Editing is an essential part of the writing process and it can make the difference between a good book and a great one. In this chapter, we'll explore the steps you can take to edit your writing for clarity and flow. The first step in editing for clarity is to check your writing for consistency. Make sure that your writing style, tone and voice are consistent throughout your book. If you switch between first person and third person, or if you switch between past and present tense, it can confuse your reader and detract from the clarity of your writing. The next step is to check for clarity. Make sure that your writing is easy to understand and that your ideas are presented in a clear and concise manner. If you find that a particular passage is confusing, rewrite it until it is clear and easy to understand. Pay special attention to areas that you may have rushed through during the writing process, as these are often areas where clarity can suffer. Flow is another important aspect of writing. Good flow means that your writing is easy to read and follow, and that the transitions between sections and chapters are smooth and seamless. To edit for flow, look for areas where you can improve the transitions between sections and chapters. Make sure that the pace of your writing is consistent and that there are no awkward pauses or slow spots. Another important aspect of editing is to check for grammar and spelling errors. Grammar and spelling errors can detract from the clarity of your writing and make it difficult for your reader to understand your ideas. Use a grammar checker or have a trusted friend or family member read your work to help you identify these errors. Finally, consider the length of your writing. While longer books can provide more opportunities for character development and storytelling, they can also be difficult to read and follow. To ensure that your book is of a reasonable length, consider cutting sections that are not essential to your story. In conclusion, editing for clarity and flow is an essential part of the writing process. Make sure that your writing is consistent, clear and easy to follow, and that your book is of a reasonable length. By taking the time to edit your writing carefully, you'll be well on your way to creating a book that is engaging, easy to read and memorable. Chapter 11 Using Conflict to Drive Your Story Conflict is a crucial element in any story and it is what sets your story apart from the rest. Conflict is the tension or struggle that your characters face and it is what drives the action of your story. In this chapter, we'll explore the different types of conflict and how to use them to drive your story forward. There are four main types of conflict character versus character, character versus nature, character versus society, and character versus self. Each type of conflict creates a different type of tension, and it's important to understand the different types of conflict so that you can use them effectively in your story. Character versus character conflict is the most common type of conflict in stories, and it involves two or more characters struggling against each other. 
This type of conflict can be used to create suspense and tension in your story, and it is often what drives the action forward. Examples of character versus character conflict include a detective trying to catch a thief, or two friends competing for the same job. Character versus nature conflict involves a character struggling against the elements, such as a natural disaster or extreme weather conditions. This type of conflict can be used to create tension in your story, and it is often used to test the resolve of your characters. Examples of character versus nature conflict include a character trying to survive a storm at sea, or a character trying to climb a dangerous mountain. Character versus society conflict involves a character struggling against the norms and expectations of their society. This type of conflict can be used to explore social and political issues, and it is often used to show the consequences of going against the norms of society. Examples of character versus society conflict include a character fighting against racial or gender discrimination, or a character trying to change the status quo. Character versus self conflict involves a character struggling against their own inner demons, such as fear, doubt, or guilt. This type of conflict can be used to explore a character's inner thoughts and motivations, and it is often used to show the character's growth and development. Examples of character versus self conflict include a character overcoming a fear of public speaking, or a character trying to overcome a past mistake. In conclusion, conflict is an essential element in any story, and it is what drives the action forward. It is important to understand the different types of conflict and to use them effectively in your story. By creating conflict in your story, you'll engage your reader, create tension, and make your story more memorable. Chapter 12 Writing Compelling Action Scenes Action scenes are a crucial component in any story and they can make or break the pace and excitement of your story. Action scenes are designed to create excitement, suspense and thrills, and they should be written in a way that keeps the reader engaged. In this chapter, we'll explore how to write compelling action scenes that will make your story come alive. First, it's important to understand the purpose of action scenes in your story. Action scenes should serve a purpose in advancing the plot, character development or theme of your story. They should not just be inserted for the sake of having action in your story. When writing action scenes, consider what the characters are fighting for and make sure that their motivations are clear. Next, it's important to create a visual image of the action. Use vivid and descriptive language to paint a picture in the reader's mind of what is happening in the scene. Avoid using long blocks of action descriptions and instead break it up into short sentences and paragraphs to keep the pace fast and intense. Use sensory details to create a more immersive experience for the reader, such as describing the sound of a bullet whizzing by or the feel of a punch landing. Another important aspect of writing action scenes is creating suspense. Suspense is what makes action scenes exciting, and it is achieved by creating tension between what the characters want and what is standing in their way. The suspense should build throughout the scene, and the tension should reach a climax just before the action sequence ends. To create suspense, use foreshadowing, misdirection and surprises to keep the reader guessing. It's also important to keep the action scenes believable. Make sure that the action and reactions of the characters are realistic, and make sense in the context of the story. Consider the laws of physics, and make sure that the action scenes are consistent with the world you have created in your story. Finally, it's important to give your characters a chance to catch their breath in between action scenes. Action scenes are intense and can be draining, and it's important to give the reader and the characters a chance to recover. Use dialogue thoughts and reflections, to give the characters a moment to catch their breath and reflect on what just happened. In conclusion, action scenes are a crucial component in any story, and they should be written in a way that creates excitement, suspense and thrills. Use descriptive language, sensory details and suspense to create a compelling action scene. Keep the action scenes believable, 
and make sure that they serve a purpose in advancing the plot, character development, or theme of your story. By writing compelling action scenes, you'll engage your reader and keep them hooked on your story. Chapter 13 The Power of Suspense Suspense is a crucial element in storytelling, as it keeps the reader engaged and wanting to know what will happen next. It is what makes a story exciting and keeps the reader on the edge of their seat. In this chapter, we will explore the power of suspense and how to create it in your writing. Suspense is the feeling of uncertainty or anxiety about what will happen next in a story. It is created by tension between what the characters want and what is standing in their way. The key to creating suspense is to keep the reader guessing about what will happen next. To do this you can use foreshadowing, misdirection and surprises. Foreshadowing is the use of hints or clues to suggest what will happen later in the story. This can be done through dialogue, description or character actions. Foreshadowing creates a sense of anticipation and keeps the reader guessing about what will happen next. Misdirection is the use of false clues or misleading information to keep the reader guessing. This can be used to create twists and turns in the story and to keep the reader engaged. Misdirection can be used to create a false sense of security or to make the reader think that they know what will happen next, only to be surprised later on. Surprises are unexpected events or twists in the story that keep the reader engaged. Surprises can be used to create excitement and keep the reader on the edge of their seat. To create a surprise, you must keep the event hidden from the reader until the right moment. Another important aspect of creating suspense is pace. Suspense is created by building tension, and the pace of the story should reflect that. Slow down the pace when the suspense is building, and speed it up when the suspense reaches its climax. This will help create a sense of urgency and keep the reader engaged. The setting and atmosphere of your story can also play a role in creating suspense. A dark and creepy setting can create a sense of unease, and a sense of danger can add to the suspense. The atmosphere of the story should reflect the mood and tone of the story, and it should help create a sense of anticipation and unease. Finally, it's important to remember that suspense should serve a purpose in your story. It should advance the plot, character development, or theme of your story. It should not just be inserted for the sake of having suspense in your story. In conclusion, suspense is a crucial element in storytelling that keeps the reader engaged and wanting to know what will happen next. Use foreshadowing, misdirection, surprises, pace and setting to create suspense in your story. Remember that suspense should serve a purpose in your story, and it should not just be inserted for the sake of having suspense. By incorporating suspense in your writing, you will keep your reader engaged and make your story more exciting. Chapter 14 Balancing Show and Tell In writing, it is important to strike a balance between showing and telling. Showing refers to using sensory details and actions to demonstrate a character's emotions, thoughts and experiences, while telling refers to summarizing or explaining these experiences through narration. When you show, you allow the reader to experience the story through the senses, which can make the scene feel more vivid and alive. However, too much showing can slow down the pace of the story, and too little can make the story feel flat and uninteresting. On the other hand, telling can be a powerful tool for conveying information quickly and efficiently. It can be used to summarize events, provide background information, or give insight into a character's thoughts and emotions. However, too much telling can make the story feel like an info dump, and it can take away from the immersive experience of the story. The key to balancing show and tell is to find the right proportion that works for your story. There is no one right answer, as the balance will vary depending on the scene, the character, and the story itself. One way to find the right balance is to use the show, don't tell principle as a general guideline. This means that when you can show something, do so, and when you need to tell something, do so in a way that is engaging and vivid. For example, 
If a character is feeling sad, you could show this by describing their body language, the tone of their voice, and the things they say. This will help the reader experience the character's sadness, rather than just being told about it. Another way to balance show and tell is to use summary and detail effectively. Summary is a form of telling that provides an overview of events or information. Detail, on the other hand, is a form of showing that provides sensory information. To balance summary and detail, use summary to convey the main events of the story, and use detail to create vivid and engaging scenes. For example, you could summarize the main events of a day in a sentence or two, and then use detail to show a scene that is particularly important or interesting. It is also important to consider the perspective of the story. Different perspectives can affect the balance of show and tell in different ways. For example, a first-person perspective may have more showing, as the narrator is describing their own experiences, while a third-person perspective may have more telling, as the narrator is providing a more objective view of events. In conclusion, balancing show and tell is an important aspect of storytelling. Use the show, don't tell principle as a general guideline, and use summary and detail effectively to convey information and create vivid scenes. Consider the perspective of the story and find the right balance that works for your story. By balancing show and tell in your writing, you can create a story that is immersive, engaging, and effective. Chapter 15 Creating Memorable Themes Themes are the underlying messages or ideas that give a story meaning and purpose. They can be subtle or overt, but they should be present in every story. A theme can be a universal truth, a lesson, or an idea that is explored and developed throughout the story. Creating memorable themes is an important aspect of writing, as it can make your story stand out, give it depth and meaning, and connect with readers on a deeper level. Here are some tips for creating memorable themes in your writing. Start with a universal truth. Universal truths are universal because they resonate with people on a deep level. Start by exploring a universal truth that is relevant to your story and your audience, and then build your story around that truth. Develop your theme through characters and events. Your characters and events should reflect and reinforce your theme. This can be done by using symbolism, metaphor and other literary devices to connect the theme to the events and characters in your story. Keep your theme consistent. Your theme should be consistent throughout the story. This means that every scene, every character and every event should reflect and reinforce the theme. Make your theme relevant. Your theme should be relevant to your audience. This means that it should touch on an issue or idea that is important to them, or that they can relate to in some way. Be subtle. Themes are most effective when they are subtle. This means that you should not hit the reader over the head with your theme, but instead let it emerge naturally from the story. Use metaphor and symbolism. Metaphor and symbolism can be powerful tools for conveying themes. For example, if your theme is about the importance of perseverance, you could use a metaphor of a runner who never gives up to represent that theme. Use the climax to reinforce the theme. The climax of your story is the most important part, as it is the moment when the story reaches its resolution. Use the climax to reinforce the theme by showing how the events and characters of the story connect to the theme in a meaningful way. In conclusion, themes are an important aspect of storytelling, as they give your story meaning and purpose. By following these tips, you can create memorable themes that will connect with your audience and make your story stand out. Remember, your theme should be universal, relevant, consistent, subtle, and reinforced by the events and characters in your story. With these elements in place, you can create a story that is not only entertaining, but also meaningful and memorable. Chapter 16 The Importance of Voice Voice is the unique style and perspective that defines a piece of writing. It sets the tone and mood of your story and gives it a distinctive personality and character. 
Voice can be described as the way in which a writer expresses their thoughts and emotions, and is what sets their writing apart from others. The importance of voice in writing cannot be overstated. A strong voice can captivate your audience, engage them emotionally, and leave a lasting impression. Here are some tips for developing a strong voice in your writing. Know your audience. Understanding your audience is key to developing a strong voice. Know who they are, what they care about, and what they expect from your writing. This will help you tailor your voice to your audience and make your writing more engaging. Be authentic. Your voice should be an honest reflection of who you are as a writer. Be true to yourself and let your personality and perspective shine through in your writing. Experiment. Experiment with different styles and perspectives until you find one that feels authentic and true to you. Don't be afraid to take risks and push the boundaries, as this is where you will find your unique voice. Read widely. Reading widely can help you develop your voice by exposing you to different styles, perspectives, and techniques. Pay attention to what you like and what works for you, and use that to guide your own writing. Use sensory language. Sensory language is a powerful tool for conveying emotions and setting the tone in your writing. Use descriptive language to engage your reader's senses and immerse them in your story. Be consistent. Once you have found your voice, be consistent in its use throughout your writing. This will help establish a strong, distinctive voice that your audience can recognize and engage with. Seek feedback. Seek feedback from trusted sources such as friends, family, or writing groups. To help you refine and develop your voice, listen to their feedback and be open to constructive criticism, as this will help you grow as a writer. In conclusion, voice is a critical component of writing that sets your work apart and makes it memorable. By following these tips, you can develop a strong, authentic voice that will engage your audience and make your writing stand out. Remember, your voice should be tailored to your audience. Be an honest reflection of who you are, and be consistent throughout your writing. With these elements in place, you will have the foundation for a powerful, memorable voice that will captivate your audience and leave a lasting impression. Chapter 17: Making the Most of Flashbacks. Flashbacks are a popular storytelling technique that allows writers to provide context, deepen characterization. And reveal important information about their characters and plot. However, if not handled properly, flashbacks can disrupt the flow of a story and confuse readers. Here are some tips for making the most of flashbacks in your writing. Purpose: Determine the purpose of the flashback before writing it. Flashbacks should serve a clear and specific purpose, such as revealing background information or developing a character. Timing. Consider the timing of the flashback. It should be placed at a point in the story where it will be most effective and will not disrupt the flow of the narrative. Clarity: Make sure the flashback is clearly marked as such, so readers know they are entering a different time period. Use clear transitions such as earlier that day or ten years ago to signal the start of the flashback. Brevity: Flashbacks should be brief and to the point. Avoid lengthy flashbacks that slow the pace of the story, and instead focus on key events or moments that will have the greatest impact. Characterization: Use flashbacks to deepen character development and reveal important information about your characters. Show rather than tell who your characters are by showing their actions, thoughts, and emotions. Tone: Consider the tone of the flashback and make sure it fits with the overall tone of your story. Flashbacks should have a different tone or mood than the present-day scenes, to help distinguish them from the main narrative. Relevance: Ensure the information revealed in the flashback is relevant to the story and its characters. Avoid including flashbacks that are unnecessary or do not serve a purpose. Foreshadowing: Use flashbacks to foreshadow future events or to reveal information that will impact the outcome of the story. This will keep readers engaged and on the edge of their seats, as they anticipate how the flashback will impact the present-day events. Show, don't tell. Remember that flashbacks are a visual storytelling tool. Show rather than tell the events and experiences of the past. 
This will bring the events to life and allow readers to experience the events alongside your characters. In conclusion, flashbacks are a powerful storytelling tool that can add depth and complexity to your writing. By following these tips, you can create effective and engaging flashbacks that will captivate your audience and bring your story to life. Keep in mind the purpose of the flashback, the timing and the tone, and make sure it is clearly marked and relevant to the story. With these elements in place, you will have the foundation for compelling and memorable flashbacks that will elevate your writing. Chapter 18 Writing Compelling Settings the setting of a story can greatly impact its tone, mood, and overall feel. A well-crafted setting can help transport readers to a different time and place, create atmosphere, and bring the story to life. Here are some tips for writing compelling settings. Research. Research the time and place where your story takes place to ensure accuracy. This includes historical, geographical, cultural, and social elements. Description. Use descriptive language to bring the setting to life. Focus on sensory details such as the sights, sounds, smells and textures to create a vivid and immersive setting. Atmosphere. Create a strong atmosphere by using the setting to reflect the mood and tone of the story. For example, a dark and creepy setting can help establish a horror story's eerie atmosphere. Characterization. Use the setting to reveal information about your characters. For example, a character's home or workplace can reveal their personality, background and social status. Conflict. Use the setting to create conflict. For example, setting a story in a remote location can create isolation and increase tension. Themes. Use the setting to reinforce themes in your story. For example, a setting that emphasizes nature can reinforce themes of environmentalism or the beauty of the natural world. Evoke emotion. Use the setting to evoke emotions in your readers. For example, a warm and cozy setting can evoke feelings of comfort and nostalgia. Uniqueness. Create a unique setting that sets your story apart from others. Consider unusual or exotic locations, or mix and match elements from different settings to create something new. Consistency. Ensure consistency throughout the story, so the setting remains believable and credible. Avoid inconsistencies or abrupt changes that can confuse or alienate readers. Show, don't tell. Show the setting through the actions and experiences of your characters. This will bring the setting to life and allow readers to experience it alongside your characters. In conclusion, a well-crafted setting can greatly enhance your story and engage your readers. By focusing on research, description, atmosphere and character development, you can create a unique and compelling setting that will transport your readers to another world. Remember to show the setting through the experiences of your characters and to use it to reinforce themes and evoke emotions in your readers. With these elements in place, you will have the foundation for a rich and immersive setting that will bring your story to life. Chapter 19 Building Tension Through Pacing Pacing is the speed at which a story unfolds and can greatly impact the tension and suspense of a story. By controlling the pace you can keep readers engaged, increase the tension, and build towards a climax. Here are some tips for building tension through pacing. Slow down. Slow down the pace in key moments to increase tension and suspense. For example, you can use slow-paced moments to build character development, provide background information, or create an eerie atmosphere. Speed up. Speed up the pace in action scenes or when the stakes are high. This can create a sense of urgency and keep readers on the edge of their seat. Vary the pace. Varying the pace keeps readers engaged and prevents boredom. Move between slow and fast-paced moments to create a dynamic and engaging story. Use foreshadowing. Use foreshadowing to create a sense of impending doom and build tension. For example, you can use cryptic statements or ominous imagery to create a sense of unease and suggest that something bad is about to happen. Use cliffhangers. Use cliffhangers to end a scene or chapter on a high note and keep readers engaged. This will make them eager to find out what happens next, 
and maintain their interest in the story. Create a rhythm. Create a rhythm by repeating certain elements in the story. For example, you can repeat certain words, phrases, or actions to create a sense of repetition and build tension. Increase the stakes. Increase the stakes by making the consequences of failure more dire. For example, you can make the stakes higher by increasing the number of lives at risk, increasing the value of what is at stake, or increasing the likelihood of failure. Use time constraints. Use time constraints to build tension and create a sense of urgency. For example, you can create a deadline that must be met or a ticking clock that counts down to the climax of the story. Use character reactions. Use character reactions to indicate the level of tension in a scene. For example, you can use facial expressions, body language, or dialogue to convey fear, anxiety, or panic. Build tension slowly. Build tension slowly over time, rather than trying to create it all at once. This will make the climax more impactful and satisfying. In conclusion, pacing is a crucial element of storytelling that can greatly impact the tension and suspense of your story. By controlling the pace, varying it, using foreshadowing and cliffhangers, creating a rhythm, increasing the stakes, and building tension slowly, you can keep readers engaged and build towards a climax that will leave them on the edge of their seat. Remember to use character reactions and time constraints to indicate the level of tension in a scene, and to create a dynamic and engaging story that will captivate your readers from beginning to end. Chapter Twenty: Writing Effective Endings. The ending of a book is often the most memorable part for readers, and can make or break their overall impression of the story. A well-crafted ending will leave a lasting impact. Making readers want to revisit the story, discuss it with others, or even recommend it to friends. On the other hand, a weak ending can leave readers feeling unsatisfied or disappointed, and can tarnish their overall experience of the book. So, how can you write an effective ending that leaves a lasting impact? Here are a few key tips to keep in mind. Tie up loose ends. Ensure that all the threads of your story have been woven together by the end. The reader should feel like all the questions they had while reading have been answered, and that the story feels complete. Resolve the conflict. The central conflict of your story should be resolved by the end. This can take many forms, from a happy resolution to a bittersweet one, but it should feel like the characters have reached a satisfying conclusion. Create closure. Your ending should provide closure for the reader, so they feel like the story has reached a definitive conclusion. This could be achieved through a final scene or a narrator's reflection on the events of the story. Be true to your characters. The characters in your story should behave in a way that is true to their personality, even in the climactic moments. If a character has been portrayed as courageous, they should act courageously in the face of danger. If they have been portrayed as cunning, they should act cunningly when trying to achieve their goals. Consider the impact. The ending should have an impact on the reader that resonates long after they have finished the book. This could be through a powerful emotional moment or a surprising twist, but it should stay with them even after they have finished the book. It is important to remember that the ending of your book is not just about wrapping up the story, but about leaving a lasting impression on the reader. Take your time to craft an ending that feels true to your story. And that will stay with your reader long after they have finished the book. In conclusion, an effective ending can take many forms, but it should always tie up loose ends, resolve the conflict, create closure, be true to the characters, and have an impact on the reader. By keeping these tips in mind, you can craft an ending that will leave a lasting impression on your readers, and make them want to revisit your story again and again. Chapter Twenty-One: The Art of Revisions. Revisions are an essential part of the writing process and can make a good book great. They give you the opportunity to improve your story, tighten your prose, and make your characters more memorable. However, revisions can also be intimidating, especially if you're not sure where to start. Here are a few tips to help you make the most of your revisions. Take a break. 
Before you start revisions, it's important to take a break from your book. This will give you some distance from the story and allow you to come back to it with fresh eyes. Read it through. Start by reading your book from beginning to end just as a reader would. This will give you a sense of the story as a whole and help you identify areas that need improvement. Focus on the big picture. During your first revision, focus on the big picture. This might include fixing plot holes, making sure your characters are well developed, and ensuring the story is well structured. Get feedback. Once you've made the big picture revisions, it's helpful to get feedback from others. This can be from beta readers, friends, or even a professional editor. They will help you identify areas that still need improvement and offer suggestions for how to make your book even better. Tighten your prose. During your revisions, pay close attention to your prose. This is your opportunity to tighten it up, make sure it's clear and concise, and that every word serves a purpose. Trust your instincts. Trust your instincts when it comes to revisions. If something doesn't feel right, take the time to fix it. If a scene feels slow, find ways to make it more action packed. Be willing to cut. Revisions can be difficult, but they're also an opportunity to make your book the best it can be. Be willing to cut scenes, characters, or even entire chapters if they don't serve the story. Celebrate your progress. Finally, remember to celebrate your progress. Revisions can be hard work, but they're also a chance to make your book the best it can be. In conclusion, revisions are an essential part of the writing process and can make a good book great. Take a break from your book, read it through, focus on the big picture, get feedback, tighten your prose, trust your instincts, be willing to cut and celebrate your progress. With these tips in mind, you can make the most of your revisions and create a book that will stand the test of time. Chapter 22, Overcoming Writer's Block. Writing is a creative process that requires discipline, hard work and persistence. However, even the most experienced and talented writers can experience writer's block, a state of mind where one finds it difficult to write and creativity seems to have vanished. This can be a frustrating experience, but it is a common one that all writers face at some point. Here are some tips to help you overcome writer's block and get back to your writing routine. Take a break. Sometimes taking a break from writing can be the best solution to overcome writer's block. Step away from your writing desk, go for a walk, read a book, or do something else that you enjoy. This can help refresh your mind and break the cycle of frustration that writer's block can bring. Change your surroundings. A change of scenery can do wonders for your creativity. Try writing in a different place, such as a park, coffee shop, or library. This new environment can help stimulate your imagination and get your creative juices flowing again. Write freely. Don't focus on the end result when trying to overcome writer's block. Instead, focus on the process of writing itself. Write anything that comes to mind without worrying about how good it is. This can help you get back into the writing routine and overcome the mental block that is holding you back. Exercise regularly. Exercise is a great way to get your blood flowing and boost your creativity. Whether you prefer to run, swim, or practice yoga, exercise can help you overcome writer's block and get back to your writing routine. Get inspiration from others. Read books, articles, and stories that inspire you. This can help you get ideas and find inspiration for your own writing. Talk to other writers. Discussing your experiences with other writers can help you find new perspectives and get advice on how to overcome writer's block. Set achievable goals. Writer's block can often be caused by feeling overwhelmed or discouraged. To overcome this, set achievable goals for your writing and take things one step at a time. In conclusion, writer's block can be a frustrating experience, but it is something that can be overcome with the right approach. Try these tips and remember that everyone experiences writer's block at some point. Don't be too hard on yourself and give yourself the time and space you need to overcome it. The most important thing is to keep writing and never give up on your passion for storytelling. Chapter 23 Finding Your Writing Process As a writer, 
it's important to find a writing process that works best for you. This process can vary greatly from writer to writer, and it's important to experiment and find what works best for you. Some writers prefer to plot out every detail of their story before they begin writing, while others prefer to simply jump in and let the story unfold as they go. There's no right or wrong way to approach the writing process, but finding your own process can greatly enhance your writing experience. One common writing process is called the pantser approach, where you write by the seat of your pants and let the story unfold as you go. This method is ideal for writers who prefer to be spontaneous and enjoy the surprises that come along with writing. This approach can lead to a fresh and exciting story, but it can also lead to some difficulties with plot and character development. Another approach is the plotter method, where you map out the entire story before you begin writing. This method is ideal for writers who prefer to have a solid plan and structure before they begin writing. This approach can lead to a well-structured and cohesive story, but it can also limit the writer's creativity and flexibility. A combination of both approaches is known as the Plantser method, where you plan some aspects of the story while allowing for spontaneous elements. This approach can provide the best of both worlds, as you have a solid structure to guide you, but you also have the freedom to make changes and let the story unfold as needed. Whichever process you choose, the key is to find what works best for you and to stick with it. Consistency is key, and finding a process that allows you to write regularly is essential. It's also important to note that your writing process can change over time. As you grow as a writer, you may find that what once worked for you no longer does. It's important to be open to trying new things and to be flexible in your approach. In conclusion, Finding your writing process is an important part of the writing journey. Experiment, be open to change and stick with what works best for you. Your writing process will help you become a more efficient and effective writer, and it will help you enjoy the writing process even more. Chapter 24 – The Benefits of Outlining Outlining is a powerful tool that can help writers organize their thoughts, flesh out their ideas, and streamline the writing process. While some writers prefer to jump right into writing without a plan, others find that outlining can help them stay focused and on track. One of the key benefits of outlining is that it helps you to see the big picture of your story. When you create an outline, you are forced to consider the structure of your narrative and think about how each scene will fit together. This can help you to avoid plot holes identify areas that need further development, and ensure that your story flows smoothly from beginning to end. Another benefit of outlining is that it can save you time in the long run. When you know what you want to write about, you can be more focused and efficient with your writing time. This can help you to avoid getting stuck, overcome writer's block and complete your book in a timely manner. Outlining can also help you to identify potential conflicts and themes in your story. By thinking about the relationships between your characters, the events that will happen in your story, and the messages you want to convey, you can identify areas where conflict might arise and start to build tension into your narrative. In addition to these benefits, outlining can also help you to be more creative. When you have a clear sense of where your story is going, you can let your imagination run wild and come up with new ideas and twists that you might not have thought of otherwise. So if you are looking to improve your writing and streamline your process, consider outlining your next book. Whether you prefer a detailed scene-by-scene -scene outline or a more general sense of the story's direction, outlining can help you to write with clarity and focus and create a narrative that is both engaging and memorable. Chapter 25, Staying Motivated Through the Writing Journey Writing a book is no easy feat. It requires a great deal of time, effort and dedication, and it can be easy to lose motivation along the way. However, staying motivated is crucial if you want to reach your goal of publishing a book. One of the best ways to stay motivated is to set clear and achievable goals. 
Whether you want to write a certain number of words per day or complete a specific chapter by a certain deadline, having a goal in mind can help you to stay focused and on track. When you reach these goals, it can also give you a sense of accomplishment and provide motivation to continue working on your book. Another way to stay motivated is to find a writing community. Whether you join a local writers group, participate in online writing forums or attend writing workshops, connecting with other writers can provide a source of inspiration and support. You can also get feedback on your work and learn from others' experiences, which can help you to improve your own writing skills. It is also important to be kind to yourself. Writing is a creative process, and it can be easy to get discouraged by setbacks and obstacles along the way. However, it is important to remember that progress is progress no matter how small, and to celebrate each accomplishment no matter how small it may seem. In addition to setting goals, finding a writing community and being kind to yourself, it can also be helpful to set aside dedicated writing time each day. By making writing a priority, you can avoid distractions and stay focused on your work. You can also use this time to establish a routine, which can help you to be more productive and motivated. Finally, it is important to remember why you started writing in the first place. Whether it is to fulfill a personal passion, tell a story that is important to you, or share your unique perspective with the world, keeping your purpose in mind can help you to stay motivated and driven, even when the journey becomes difficult. Writing a book is a long and challenging process, but it is also a rewarding one. By setting goals, finding a supportive community, being kind to yourself, dedicating time to writing and staying true to your purpose, you can stay motivated and reach your goal of publishing a book that you can be proud of. Chapter 26 Building a Writing Routine As a writer, developing a consistent and productive writing routine is crucial for success. It helps to increase your motivation, creativity, and overall productivity. A writing routine allows you to structure your time and set aside specific blocks for writing, research, and editing. In this chapter, we will explore the benefits of having a writing routine and how to build one that works for you. The benefits of a writing routine. Having a writing routine helps to establish a consistent writing habit. This consistency leads to increased productivity and creativity as your mind becomes trained to write at the same time each day. A routine also helps you to overcome writer's block as it provides structure and discipline. By setting aside specific times for writing, you can focus solely on your work, free from distractions and interruptions. In addition, a writing routine can help to eliminate procrastination. When you have a set time for writing, you are less likely to put it off, as you have already carved out the time in your schedule. This in turn will help you to stay on track and reach your writing goals. Building a writing routine. To build a writing routine, start by setting a specific time and place for writing each day. This can be in the morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on your schedule and personal preferences. It is important to choose a time when you are most alert and focused, and to avoid scheduling your writing time during your busiest or most stressful periods. Next, create a dedicated writing space. This can be a home office, a library, or simply a corner of your living room. The key is to choose a place that is quiet, comfortable, and free from distractions. This will help you to focus on your writing and to avoid interruptions. Once you have a set time and place for writing, it is important to establish a routine that works for you. This can include taking breaks, researching, or editing. For example, you might choose to write for 30 minutes, take a 10-minute break, then write for another 30 minutes. You might also choose to set aside time each day for researching or for editing and revising your work. It is important to be flexible with your routine and to adjust it as needed. Life can be unpredictable, and sometimes you may need to reschedule or skip a writing session. This is okay, as long as you are consistent with your routine and make up the time lost. Finally, 
it is important to stay motivated and focused on your writing goals. This can include setting small, achievable goals and tracking your progress. You can also join a writing group or find a writing partner to keep you accountable and motivated. In conclusion, building a writing routine is an important step towards becoming a successful writer. By setting a specific time and place for writing and establishing a routine that works for you, you can increase your productivity, creativity, and motivation. Remember, every writer is unique, so be flexible and adjust your routine as needed. Stay focused on your writing goals and keep writing. Chapter 27 Working with Beta Readers As a writer, it's easy to get caught up in your own head and lose sight of the bigger picture. This is where beta readers can be incredibly valuable. A beta reader is someone who reads an early draft of your book and provides feedback. They can help you identify weaknesses in your plot, characters or writing style and offer suggestions for improvement. Having beta readers is a crucial step in the writing process and one that should not be taken lightly. Here are some tips for working effectively with beta readers. Choose beta readers wisely. Choose beta readers who you trust to give you honest and constructive feedback. They should have a good understanding of the genre you're writing in and be familiar with your writing style. Provide clear instructions. Before sending your manuscript to beta readers, make sure to provide them with clear instructions on what you're looking for in terms of feedback. This could include questions like, what did you like or dislike about the characters, or did the plot keep you engaged? Be open to feedback. Once you receive feedback from your beta readers, be open to their suggestions. Remember that their feedback is a gift, and take the time to consider each suggestion carefully. Keep your beta readers in the loop, keep your beta readers updated on your progress, and let them know when you've made changes based on their feedback. This will not only show them that you value their input, but it will also help you keep track of your own revisions. Take feedback with a grain of salt. While beta reader feedback is valuable, it's important to remember that it's just one person's opinion. Take their suggestions into consideration, but don't feel obligated to make changes based on their feedback. Thank your beta readers. Last but not least, make sure to thank your beta readers for their time and effort. They are taking time out of their own lives to help you improve your writing, and showing appreciation is the least you can do. In conclusion, working with beta readers can be a valuable part of the writing process. By choosing beta readers wisely, providing clear instructions, being open to feedback, keeping them in the loop, taking feedback with a grain of salt and thanking them, you can get the most out of the experience and improve your writing in the process. Chapter 28 The Publishing Process Publishing your book is the ultimate goal of every writer. It's the moment when your words become available to the world and you can finally share your story with the masses. The publishing process can seem daunting and overwhelming, but with a little bit of planning and research you can make it a smooth and stress-free experience. The first step in the publishing process is to choose the type of publishing you want to pursue. There are two main options, traditional publishing and self-publishing. Traditional publishing involves finding an agent who will represent you and your work to publishers. Self-publishing allows you to take control of the entire process and release your book directly to the public. If you choose traditional publishing, it's important to understand that the process can be slow and competitive. Agents receive hundreds of submissions every day and only a small percentage are selected for representation. Once you have an agent, they will help you edit your book and submit it to publishers. If a publisher is interested in your book, they will offer you a contract. From there, it can take several months to a year for your book to be released. If you choose self-publishing, you will have more control over the process and timeline. You'll be responsible for editing, formatting and designing your book. You'll also need to choose a self-publishing platform, such as Amazon's Kindle Direct Publishing, to distribute your book. With self-publishing, you can release your book in a matter of weeks, 
but you will also be responsible for marketing and promoting it. Regardless of the type of publishing you choose, it's important to have a polished and well-edited manuscript before submitting it for publication. This means taking the time to revise, edit and proofread your work to ensure that it's the best it can be. You should also consider hiring a professional editor to help you refine your writing and make your book as polished as possible. Once your book is published, you'll need to focus on promoting and marketing it. This can involve reaching out to media outlets, bloggers and bookstores to generate buzz and get your book in front of readers. You may also want to consider attending book festivals, book clubs and other literary events to connect with your audience and build your brand. In conclusion, the publishing process can be a long and challenging journey, but with a little bit of planning and preparation, you can turn your dream of becoming a published author into a reality. Whether you choose traditional publishing or self-publishing, remember to stay focused, stay motivated, and never give up on your writing goals. Chapter 29 Marketing Your Book After putting in countless hours of hard work, researching, writing, editing and revising your book, it's time to share it with the world. The next step in the writing process is to get your book in the hands of as many readers as possible. To do that, you need to have a solid marketing strategy in place. Marketing your book is an essential part of the publishing process, and it is something you should start thinking about as soon as you begin writing. There are many different ways to market your book, from traditional methods like book signings and author readings, to newer approaches like social media marketing and email campaigns. One of the most important things to remember when marketing your book is to be authentic. Your readers will appreciate it if you are honest and genuine about your book and your writing process. Don't try to sell your book with gimmicks or false promises. Instead, be confident in your work and let your book speak for itself. Social media is a powerful tool for book marketing. There are countless platforms to choose from, and you should choose the ones that best suit your needs. Platforms like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and Goodreads are all great places to start. You can use social media to share teases, updates and information about your book with your followers. Be sure to engage with your followers and respond to their questions and comments. Another effective marketing tool is email marketing. You can use email to reach out to your followers and provide them with updates and information about your book. Make sure to build a mailing list of people who are interested in your work and would like to hear more from you. You can use email to send out regular newsletters, special promotions and updates about your book. Book signings and author readings are also effective ways to market your book. These events give you the opportunity to connect with your readers and build a relationship with them. You can talk about your writing process, answer questions and sign copies of your book. These events are a great way to build your brand and create a following. Lastly, make sure to have a professional book cover and book description. Your book cover is the first thing that people will see when they come across your book, and it is the first impression that they will have of your work. Your book description should be clear, concise and accurately reflect what your book is about. Marketing your book is a crucial part of the publishing process, and it requires time, effort and dedication. But with the right strategy in place, you can reach your target audience and connect with your readers. So put your best foot forward and let the world know about your book. Chapter 30 – The Continuing Evolution of Your Craft Writing is a lifelong journey, and as you continue to hone your skills and grow as a writer, your craft will evolve and change. There is always room for improvement, and even the most successful authors continue to strive for greatness. In this final chapter, we will explore some ways to continue developing your craft and staying motivated throughout your writing journey. One way to grow as a writer is to continue learning and seeking new inspiration. Attend writing workshops, join a writing group or take online courses to broaden your knowledge and hone your skills. Reading widely and exploring new genres will also expand your understanding of the craft and give you new ideas to try. 
Another way to continue evolving your craft is to try new writing techniques and styles. Experiment with different points of view, dialogue, or descriptive techniques to find what works best for you. Don't be afraid to take risks and try something new. You never know what you might discover. It's also important to seek constructive criticism from others to help you improve your writing. Share your work with beta readers, attend writing critique sessions, or seek feedback from fellow writers. Constructive criticism will help you identify areas for improvement and give you the opportunity to grow as a writer. Staying motivated is also key to continuing your writing journey. Set achievable goals for yourself and celebrate your successes along the way. Surround yourself with supportive people who encourage your writing and offer encouragement when you need it. And remember that writing is a journey, not a destination. The joy is in the process, not just the finished product. Finally, never stop writing. The more you write, the more you will improve, and the more your craft will evolve. Even when you are not actively writing, keep a journal or notebook to jot down ideas, thoughts, and inspiration. And most importantly, enjoy the journey. Writing should be fun and fulfilling, not just a chore. In conclusion, the art of writing is always evolving, and there is always room for growth and improvement. By seeking new inspiration, trying new techniques, seeking constructive criticism, staying motivated, and never stopping writing, you will continue to grow as a writer and evolve your craft for years to come. About the author. Bill Vincent is no stranger to understanding the power of God. Not only has he spent over 20 years as a minister with a strong prophetic anointing, he is now also an apostle and author with Revival Waves of Glory Ministries in Litchfield, Eel. Along with his wife, Tabitha, he leads a team providing apostolic oversight in all aspects of ministry including service, personal ministry and godly character. Bill offers a wide range of writings and teachings from deliverance to experiencing presence of God and developing apostolic cutting-edge church structure. Drawing on the power of the Holy Spirit through years of experience in revival, spiritual sensitivity and deliverance ministry, Bill now focuses mainly on pursuing the presence of God and breaking the power of the devil off of people's lives. His books 50 and Counting has since helped many people to overcome the spirits and curses of Satan. For more information or to keep up with Bill's latest releases, please visit www.revivalwavesofgloryministries.com. To contact Bill, feel free to follow him on Twitter at Revival Waves. Read more at Bill Vincent's site. About the Publisher accepting manuscripts in the most categories. We love to help people get their words available to the world. Revival Waves of Glory Focus is to provide more options to be published. We do traditional paperbacks, hardcovers, audiobooks and ebooks all over the world. A traditional royalty-based publisher that offers self-publishing options, Revival Waves provides a very author-friendly and transparent publishing process with President Bill Vincent involved in the full process of your book. Send us your manuscript and we will contact you as soon as possible. Contact Bill Vincent at rwgpublishing at yahoo.com.